Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about cluster operator and developer best practices to build and manage applications on Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS. Building and running applications successfully in Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS, require understanding and implementation of some key considerations, including 1. Multi-tenancy and scheduler features. 2. Cluster and pod security. As a cluster operator, work together with application owners and developers to understand their needs. You can then use the following best practices to configure your AKS clusters as needed. As you manage clusters in Azure Kubernetes Service AKS, you often need to isolate teams and workloads. AKS provides flexibility in how you can run multi-tenant clusters and isolate resources. To maximize your investment in Kubernetes, first understand and implement AKS multi-tenancy and isolation features. Let's focus on isolation for cluster operators. 1. How to plan for multi-tenant clusters and separation of resources 2. Use logical or physical isolation in your AKS clusters 3. Design clusters for multi-tenancy. Kubernetes lets you logically isolate teams and workloads in the same cluster. The goal is to provide the least number of privileges, scoped to the resources each team needs. A Kubernetes namespace creates a logical isolation boundary. With logical isolation, a single AKS cluster can be used for multiple workloads, teams, or environments. Kubernetes namespaces form the logical isolation boundary for workloads and resources. Logical separation of clusters usually provides a higher pod density than physically isolated clusters, with less excess compute capacity sitting idle in the cluster. When combined with the Kubernetes cluster autoscaler, you can scale the number of nodes up or down to meet demands. This best practice approach to autoscaling minimizes costs by running only the number of nodes required. Currently, Kubernetes environments aren't completely safe for hostile multi-tenant usage. In a multi-tenant environment, multiple tenants are working on a common, shared infrastructure. If all tenants cannot be trusted, you will need extra planning to prevent tenants from impacting the security and service of others. Additional security features, like pod security policies or Kubernetes RBAC for nodes, efficiently block exploits. For true security when running hostile multi-tenant workloads, you should only trust a hypervisor. The security domain for Kubernetes becomes the entire cluster, not an individual node. For these types of hostile multi-tenant workloads, you should use physically isolated clusters. Physically separating AKS clusters is a common approach to cluster isolation. In this isolation model, teams or workloads are assigned their own AKS cluster. While physical isolation might look like the easiest way to isolate workloads or teams, it adds management and financial overhead. Now, you must maintain these multiple clusters and individually provide access and assign permissions. You'll also be billed for each the individual node. Physically separate clusters usually have a low pod density. Since each team or workload has their own AKS cluster, the cluster is often over-provisioned with compute resources. Often, a small number of pods are scheduled on those nodes. Unclaimed node capacity can't be used for applications or services in development by other teams. These excess resources contribute to the additional costs in physically separate clusters. Let's understand AKS security. By default, a network security group of a Microsoft Azure Kubernetes service, AKS, cluster. AKS automatically modifies network security groups for appropriate traffic flow as services are created with load balancers, port mappings, or ingress routes. The network security group is automatically associated with the virtual NICs on customer nodes and the root table with the subnet on the virtual network. Use AKS network policies to limit network traffic by defining rules for ingress and egress traffic between Linux pods in a cluster based on choice of namespaces and label selectors. Network policy usage requires the Azure CNI plugin with defined virtual network and subnets and can only be enabled at cluster creation. They cannot be deployed on an existing AKS cluster. You can implement a private AKS cluster to ensure network traffic between your AKS API server and node pools remains only on the private network. The control plane or API server resides in an AKS managed Azure subscription and uses internal RFC 1918 IP addresses, while the customer's cluster or node pool is in their own subscription. 
The server and the cluster or node pool communicate with each other using the Azure Private Link service in the API Server Virtual Network and a private endpoint that's exposed in the subnet of the customer's AKS cluster. Alternatively, use a public endpoint for the AKS API Server but restrict access with the AKS API Server's authorized IP ranges feature. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos on cluster operations in AKS.